Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the Art of Water. Today we're going to do a species profile on the peacock gudgeon. Right now I have them in my quarantine tank that uh, I've only had these guys for about four or five days and uh, they're uh, adjusting to this particular tank and uh, we'll see how they do, make sure that they don't have any parasites or other issues before I put them in with my uh, general population tank. I may actually do a tank, a species tank for these guys primarily to see if I can actually do some breeding. Now, the uh, peacock gudgeon is uh, from Papua New Guinea area originally and uh, is easily bred in the uh, home tank uh, if you provide the right environment for them. A lot of people use PCV pipe with a cap on one end of it that's uh, uh, vertical in the uh, uh, in the water and uh, is uh, pretty much uh, a male and a female uh, will uh, use that sort of environment. You can also use pottery that has holes that are drilled into it or something of that nature. They're very, very easy to breed according to uh, friends of mine who have done so. And uh, I think that they're uh, probably one of the uh, uh, the most beautiful fish that I've ever seen. Now, if you are breeding them, what you're going to see is that the male will in the, will do a little dance for the female and try to lure the female into uh, this area that we talked about, either, like I said, the PVC pipe or a pottery piece or something like that. And in doing so, basically, um, he will lure the female in there, she'll lay her eggs, and of course, he will take care of them from that point on. Uh, what you don't want to do is once the eggs are about ready to hatch, uh, you don't want to leave the male or the female in the tank. Uh, he is pretty much going to take over the care of them anyway, but you do not want to leave them in the tank uh, because they will uh, predate on their, uh, on their young. So uh, one of the things that uh, I find a little bit difficult about these guys is getting them to eat certain foods. Now, it may be just a tank adjustment. They do seem to eat uh, Daphne. They do seem to eat some flake foods. I'm trying some different things, but they're not real eager eaters. They're certainly not aggressive eaters. They, uh, they sort of stay to the bottom of the tank, or right now, as for some reason, they're in the middle of the tank, and maybe it's because they think I'm going to feed them. But uh, feeding them this morning, I did notice that they're eating a little bit better. But man, they are extremely picky about uh, what they eat and how much they eat. Um, so you got to be really careful not to pollute their tank by putting too much food in there. Uh, one of the other things I want to talk about with these fish is you got to have a lid in here. You just absolutely have to have a lid. These guys are jumpers, and I found that out very quickly. I had uh, had an air stone in here the first couple of nights that uh, I had these guys and one of the males jumped right out of the back of the tank. I didn't see it happen. I saw him floundering around on the floor and I thought that he was uh, going to be a goner because of that. But he, uh, after about an hour or so, was acting fairly normal. So I don't think he was out of the tank very long. And uh, that's him right up at the top corner here. So obviously he's doing really well. That's a male. Now you can usually tell the males and the females in this way. The males have a long uh, lateral, or excuse me, a long um, uh, anal fin, which goes all the way to the back and is generally yellow, does not have the black line across the bottom or the top fin. Uh, if you notice the females in here, such as uh, this one right here, you'll see that across the bottom um, of the fin, there is a black line that runs uh, from uh, one end to the other. It can be a little bit tricky, as you can see, that black line, but it can be a little bit tricky because sometimes the males and the females will show similar traits until they're old enough really to uh, be uh, easily identified. Uh, one of the other things I want to talk about is the temperature of the tank and the flow of the water. They don't like, as I said, a very strong flow in a tank. They like something that is uh, basically um, pretty, pretty easily 
uh, uh, streamed into the tank. Um, they do best with that. If it's too much, they're not very good swimmers, so they will really have a hard time and be exhausted by the fact that uh, uh, they're fighting a current. And when that happens, obviously we know that when animals have this kind of a problem, uh, fish particularly, when they have this kind of a problem, uh, you will see that they're more susceptible to diseases. So one of the things that I recommend, again, is a top on these because they jump, and uh, boy, do they jump. It's one of the most uh, jumping fish that I've ever seen, and you can see why. They go right to the top very aggressively, and uh, I don't know why they do this, but uh, as I learn more, I will uh, tell you more about it. Uh, the colors on these guys, as I said, are extremely beautiful, as you can see. Uh, they have the orange uh, sort of striped and bands, and they do flare a little bit. Every once in a while, you'll notice them flare and show off that color. And they also have that uh, very predominant black dot on the tail fin uh, that is easily identified. Uh, both male and female have that. That is not unique to either the male or the female. Anyways, if you have any other questions about this uh, fish, uh, go ahead and comment or ask questions and I'll be glad to answer. But right now, like I said, these guys are, are in my um, tank here to uh, kind of sit it out until I am sure that they're disease free. And uh, this quarantine tank here is a good size tank for five of these fish. It's about a six and a half gallon tank. And uh, they, do like, uh, they do like a planted aquarium so they can find places to hide. Uh, there's not a lot of plants in this one, but there's enough uh, caves and little things like that that I built around to make sure that they had places to hide. And they seem to be fairly happy in here. Water temperature, you want to run anywhere from 75 to 78 degrees. You can go over that a little bit to around 80 degrees. But uh, they primarily... Uh, like temperatures right around 76 to 78 is ideal. So if you are uh, really, uh, you know, trying to get your tank perfect for breeding, uh, 78 degrees is where you want it to be for breeding. Uh, 78 to 79 is absolutely perfect for that. Anyways, any other questions, uh, leave me a comment. Uh, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe as well. If you like uh, the content of my videos, and uh, so forth, then uh, I'd be uh, happy to hear from you uh, and give you any information about these fish that I can. And uh, anyways, uh, George with the Art of Water, uh, nice to talk to you and we'll talk again soon.